Good morning, students. Uh, till now, we have studied about control statement in C++. So, uh, we have discussed about flow of execution of our program. We have discussed about conditional, sequential, iterative and switch case control statement. We have discussed about break statement, continue statement and go to statement. Uh, we have also seen the uses of break statement uh, that we can use it in for, uh, inside the loop as well as inside the switch case statement and we have also discussed what will happen if I am not using a break statement inside switch case. We have seen examples based on every every topic what I have discussed. Now today we are going to explain about arrays. So what is array? Uh, this is again uh, similar to C language uh, array is very similar what you have studied in C that is the same concept in C++ just I want to recall you just I want to uh, get a little idea about array because you already know array I just want to recall the things what you have studied in C language uh, what is array array is a collection of homogeneous type of values uh, homogeneous words is word is important why it is important because let's suppose I want to store 10, 10 students marks I can only take either integer value or float value I cannot put integer as well as float both inside the array so whenever you are going to create an array you can take a similar kind of values inside it so let's suppose uh, you want to store 10 persons age so you need to maintain uh, 10 variables manually if you are going to maintain the 10 person is and you are creating 10 variables then it is uh, throughout the program you have to manage that 10 variables array is a solution of, of this problem using array you can create one array and that can hold any number of value whatever the size you will provide now array is a static data structure what is the meaning of a static data structure that means you have to specify the size of array at the time of declaration of the array. So this is very mandatory that you have to specify the size. So the same thing is written in the PowerPoint slide also. An array is a collection of similar items stored in continuous memory location. So just one more important thing. Let's suppose you are going to create five variables. That five variables will allocate memory at different different places inside the RAM. But when you are going to create an array, that will allocate memory continuously. So the second important point, first important point was array is a collection of similar type of values. And the second important point was, point is uh, array always allocates memory continuously. In programming, sometimes a simply variable is not enough to hold all the data. For example, let's say we want to store the marks of 500 students. Having 500 different variable for this task is not feasible. We can define an array with the size of 500. So size, size, defining size is mandatory. That can hold the marks of all the students. So the next thing is what? When you declare an array, then how to access the element of array? For accessing the array element, we need to use the indexes or subscript of the array. So array index always starts from 0 to size minus 1. So let's suppose you have created an array of 5 size, then the array index will go from 0 to 4. If you have created an array of 500 size, array index will move from 0 to 499. So let's suppose here is the size of array is 5. The index is from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and the elements are 78, 91, 2027 and 19. So if you want to access 78, you need to write array name, square bracket, then index position, and then closing a square bracket. So array 0 will return you 78. Take care, ARR is the name of array. Whatever you want, you can take the name of an array. So ARR, hence ARR1 will return you 91, ARR2 will return you 202, ARR3 will return you 7, and ARR4 will return you 19. So, how to declare an array, data type, name of array, square bracket, size of array, then closing a square bracket. So, here I have declared int arr5 and then I am initializing element. So, when I have declared arr5, the index position will vary from 0 to 4. So, arr0 will represent first position, 
There I am storing 10, ARR1 equals to 20, ARR2 equals to 30, ARR3 equals to 40, ARR4 equals to 50. This is a one way to initialize the value inside array. The another way to initialize the value is the method 2 written in the slide. So int ARR. Now you are looking here, I have not specified the size because I have initialized the value at the time of declaration of the array. So if you are initializing the value at the time of declaration of array, it is not mandatory to specify the size of the array. And the third method, you can also define the size also. So I have defined size and then I have initialized the value 10 to 50. So whatever the method you want to use, you can use for uh, initializing the value of an array. How to display? That's very simple. I have taken an array of five size. Their elements are 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. So you can uh, display C out ARR 0, C out ARR 1, C, C out ARR 2, C out ARR 3, and C out ARR 4. Many of you were thinking that in C, I have used loop to displaying an element of an array. Yes, of course, you can use here also the loops. By using loops, you can also display the elements of an array. So here I have used the loop. So I have declared an array of five size, 11, uh, 11 22, 33, 44, 55 are the five elements. And then I have run a loop, taken a variable n equals to zero. Run a loop, n is less than equals to four. You can write n is less than five, both is same. So less than five and less than equals to four is equal. So see out ARR n. So first time the value of n is zero. So first element ARR zero will get displayed. That 11 will get displayed. Then n plus plus the value of n will become one. ARR one will get displayed 22. Then n plus plus two two is less than equals to four. ARR two will get displayed. Then ARR three will get displayed. Then ARR four will get displayed. And then when the loop will fall, you will come outside from the loop. Multidimensional array, you all know that in C also you can declare two dimension array. So in two dimension array, there are two things. So in one dimension array, we can only specify the columns. In two dimension array, we specify rows and columns. So here you are looking, there are three rows and five columns. So how to access the element? So for accessing first element, ARR00. So row one will in, uh, has index zero. Row two has index one. Row three has index two. So column 1 has index 0, column 2 has index 1, column 3 has index 2, column 4 has index 3, column 5 has index 4, and hence you can access the element of the index. So you can initialize also the two dimension array. So let's suppose you have declared an array of two rows and three columns, the total number of elements you can store six. So there are two methods of initializing two dimension array. So the first method ARR23, you can directly put the element. It will automatically 10, 11, 12 will move to the first column and 20, 21, 22 will move to the second column. So there are two rows and three columns. The second way of initializing, here it is very clear that in first row what will store, in second row what will store. Another, another way you can directly put element so arr 0 0 you can put first element arr 0 1 you can put second element and so on you are uh, arr 1 2 you can put sixth element so um, you must have remember for displaying the two dimension array element in c you have used nested loop so first loop is run for rows and second loop is run for columns so here the size of array is two row and three columns. So you are looking first for loop is running for zero to less than two. And the size of column is three. So second for loop is running for less than three. And then you are displaying ARR IJ and hence all values will get displayed. So uh, before moving to a string, I just want to say you that uh, Create some programs like uh, all sorting programs, all searching programs, matrix addition, matrix man manipulation, uh, multiplication, arrays, uh, questions based on arrays. You can implement all the things what you have done in C language in C++ also. So when you will do practice, you will learn a lot of things. So I'm not saying uh, discussing too much about arrays because I am pretty sure that you all are aware about arrays. So I just go through the slide. Uh, I have given you some assignment that please, please implement all the programs what you have done in C language. Just use C++ syntax and implement all the things what you have done in C earlier. 
Now, what about C? Uh, what about string in C++? That is a little, little different in C++. Not different. Actually, whatever you have done in C language, you can do in C++ also. But C++ provides some additional capability to handle this string. So, we'll see what are the additional capability. First, whatever you have done in C language, you can do in C++ also. So, what is a string? A string are words that are made up of characters. Hence, they are known as sequence of character. In C++, we have two ways to create and use a string. So, I have told you that one way is very similar to C language and another is a new way what is provided by C++. So, first way by creating character array that you have done in C language and treat them as a string. And the second way by creating a string object. So, what is a string object? We will discuss it. So the first way very similar to C language you have taken a character array of 50 size you have stored a song of ice and fire and then you have displayed by using C out array name and it will show you a song of ice and fire and this is easy because you do not need to use any percentile s here. So in comparison of C language handling a string in C++ is much easier. How to accept the value from the user? You can use scene statement like you have done for integer, for float, for double, uh, for character you can do for a string also. So you have taken an array of 50 size, you have written enter your favorite book's name, scene, array name, scene, two times greater than symbol and then array name. So now I'm not going to say greater than symbol, that is a extraction or get from operator. So you can use get from operator and then array name. And then you are displaying so let's suppose a message is coming enter your favorite books and name you have entered the model of browser acquired and surprise you are looking the entire string not get displayed just it is coming you entered the so only first word of the string get displayed so you can see the only the the got captured in the book and remaining part after a space got ignored how to deal with them like in C language when you were entering the string from the user by using percentile s that was only entering a single word and for accepting it from the user you use gets here we use c in dot get so if you are going to use c in dot get the problem got resolved so if you want to enter a complete string you need to use c in dot get so you are looking in the given example i have taken an array of 50 size it is written enter your favorite book name. Uh, then i have used c in dot get array name comma size of the array then you have enter uh, so written c out two times less than symbol then array name and that will get displayed so enter your favorite books and name the model of rosa acquired and then entire string is got displayed so in the second semester many of the students asked from me that uh sir the size of array is a huge problem so if you are going to take a 10 character size uh, uh you have taken an array of 50 size and you are just entering 10 characters 40 byte of memory get wasted and on the time i told every student that you can use dynamic memory allocation technique c plus plus resolve this issue c plus plus how to resolve this issue by giving us a string class object so drawback of this method size of the character array is fixed which means the size of a string created through it is fixed in size more memory cannot be allocated to it during runtime so let's suppose you have taken the size of character array 10 and you want to enter 50 characters you cannot take on the other hand if you create a larger array let's suppose you have taken the size 100 and you are just entering 10 90 bytes is going to be waste in this method you can only use inbuilt functions created for array which don't help much in string manipulation what is the solution of this problem and then the solution is you can create a string object now how to handle with the string object that is very simple that you just need to see you need to create a string treat it as a data type in c so i have created a variable str of a string then i have given a message enter a string then there is a method get line 
there is a method is nothing but a function so get line is a function what is the syntax of get line inside get line you need to pass scene comma name of file now whatever the string will you will enter it will only allocate that much memory and then you are displaying c out str that will display you the entire string whatever you have you are looking here str pushback str dot pushback and i have written single quote a what it will do it will push back means at the last of a string it will append a character whatever you have passed that is a predefined function so for accessing this function you need to use the object of a string class so str dot push back push back is used to append a character at the last of the string again pop back is used to remove the character from the last of the string so when you will run this program i have entered a string xyz then the message will come you entered xyz then i have pushed back a so you are looking it is displaying xyz a then i have done pop back then a got removed and it is showing you xyz the simple advantage whatever the string you are going to take it will take just the same size i just want to say you a string is not a uh, difficult a string is not different from c language uh, please create 10 12 program whatever whatever you have created in c in c++ also just for practice the things so that is about array and string in c++ and i hope you all will practice it thank you very much